Hello and welcome to a look at uh, Captured for the Commodore 64, a game that was done by Grave Graphics. Uh, this sounds rather like a Danish developer team thing, uh, in which you play the role of a soldier one, a very famous soldier apparently, who finds himself waking up with a huge bomb on his head. He's been captured and placed in this very very large building and his objective is to escape a set of building. In order to do so, he needs to find a 9-digit code in order to unlock the exit and then eventually escape from the building. At his disposal, um, the soldier one has the agility of a uh, somewhat diminished Spider-Man. Is quite capable of doing some quite long jumps and he does not take any falling damage, which is quite a positive. But he also has access to a bomb kind of thing that can be used to clear a screen of enemies in order to make it easier to progress through the screens. Uh, the problem with using said bomb or bombs, whatever, is the fact that if you exit the screen and come back into it, um, any enemies that you have just blown up will be reset. So, uh, like doing something like I just did there, is um, not great because, of course, you have um, spent your bomb and you didn't get any benefit from it. So. Um, one of the main aspects of this game is to make sure that uh, whatever bombs you have available, you only use when you absolutely have to. Because any room that you can navigate without using a bomb, you should navigate without using a bomb, because you will find a room shortly after where you badly need a bomb and you just spend it on something you could have completed without using it. Obviously when you're playing uh, the game, uh, Initially, you will probably want to get a feel for what the different rooms um, do and what obstacles are uh, needed to be navigated. And in that regard, I suppose using the bombs to make it easier for yourself is not necessarily a bad thing. But the whole concept is basically that you have to navigate several different screens by jumping past, over, under. Um, enemies and um, getting into other screens and what you are trying to get to is to a specific room which I completely forgotten the name of where you play a mini game where you have to defend yourself from enemies coming from all directions and once you have completed that you'll be given a uh, one of the digits that you need for the password to unlock the exit Outside of the weapon, uh, the bomb thing, uh, Soldier 1 can jump, and that is his main defense against uh, whatever is on the different screens, and getting used to the length of jumps is something that uh, you need to in order to have any chance of progressing, but I actually found much to my delight that it was relatively simple to get used to. The main challenge becomes bumping into screens you haven't seen before and then start to navigate the screens and work around the obstacles and all that good stuff. From a graphical point of view, this game is not bad at all. Um, the main character is quite well animated and uh, your opponents are decently enough animated, even though some of them look quite wacky, I suppose, but um, from a graphical point of view, I think the game looks quite decent, and of course, uh, the main character moves very, very smoothly and at a good pace, so the pacing is actually quite decent. The music, it is a bit plain, but uh, I'm glad it's there. It doesn't intrude in any way, shape or form, and having something in the background when you are navigating the different screens is very, very nice. 
So I uh, do not mind the music. I don't perhaps love it, but I don't mind it at all. When it comes to sound effects, uh, it's always a bit wonky to talk about sound effects because unless they are very, very distinctive or epic sounding in some way, shape, or form, you can only say so much about the sound effects. The sound effects are there to inform you of what you are doing and what the enemies are doing and what's happening to you and what's happening to the enemies. And in that regard, the sound effects in this game are fulfilling their purpose adequately. Nothing memorable, but uh, not something that sounds out of place either. But of course, every game is about the gameplay. As a gamer, this kind of gameplay is not necessarily something that I would hold in high regard because it's uh, not something I normally find particularly enjoyable having to uh, navigate several different screens and learning them um, by playing them until I get sick of looking at them. But for some odd reason, and I really can't pinpoint why, it did not bother me with this game. I don't know whether it's a combination of the sound in the background and the graphics and the relatively smooth uh, gameplay itself that did it for me, but I actually found that I quite enjoy it playing Captured. It's definitely a game I've played before, but it would have been at least 30 years ago, and I remember having played it, but I do not remember any details um, about it outside of that. It's a run and jump platform, learn pattern kind of game. The main challenge is, of course, to navigate the different screens and uh, learn where to use your very limited bombs in order to progress. And that is where the challenge in this game lies. As I said before, much to my surprise, I actually enjoyed this and I don't know how high I would rate it, but I definitely did not dislike it. On that note, thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye bye for now.